So we are starting off with knowing the mind of Russia. American and Russian leaders are blocking the other side's media from their own people. And I want to start off with a clip that shows Crystal and Sagar of breaking points that are describing the problem of what is going on with Russia and U.S. media and the digital barricades that are up. There's basically a wall between Russia and the rest of the world with digital information. And the United States has also started blocking Russian state media or any media that has anything to do with Russia, which is nuts. But here is the clip from Breaking Points. We saw a statement come out from the Kremlin, and I was like, oh man, is this the correct right translation? I was like, what does that mean? I said, well, I gotta go check TASS, which is the Russian state media organization. So I go on TASS and I read it in English, the official state media translation. I'm like, okay, I feel comfortable sharing this on the air. So I had to use Russian state media. Whenever we talk about China, I do the same thing. I go and I read the Global Times. Now I should have access to that, no? The more that we have bifurcated information environments, the more screwed we are. You have got to understand what is the Russian point of view. My entire monologue today is actually going to be about this in terms of some of the thinkers that the Russians are listening to, what the most extreme view of that looks like. Guess why I'm bringing it to you? Because you need to understand their mind. Is Maybe sanctions are exactly what they want. Maybe we've actually achieved Putin and some of the most ultra-nationalist, wildest dreams. I'm not saying we shouldn't have done it anyway, but understand the implication. Know what it means. Know the mind of your adversary, what they care about, and what they don't. So that's Crystal and Sagar of Breaking Points. Great show. Go check it out. But basically, Russia is blocking U.S. media outlets from their own people and anything that isn't Russia's state media. There's a complete digital barricade right now between Russia and the rest of the world. All Even small independent media sources are at risk of being completely wiped off the map in Russia. And then uh, the opposite... Uh, you have the U.S. that is taking away anything that has to do with Russia. So, so not just Russian propaganda, but you know, podcasts that are mentioning Russia, podcasts that are on Russian affiliated networks. So, let's get into the specifics. So, on the Russian side, you have TikTok, which is gone, Netflix, which is gone, YouTube may go. Uh, Russian officials are getting rid of independent news sources. And they actually want a digital barricade to help spread propaganda to the people. On the U.S. side, we have CNN, which shut down RT America, which is a Russian-owned news network. Facebook is demoting Russian posts. And Russian podcasts are being removed from Spotify. Here's the thing. When you have conflict with someone else, something else, whether it's person on person, state versus state, Propaganda is certainly dangerous, but what's even more dangerous is not having any information. Just blacking everything out that is completely fucking insane. It would be good for Russia to know how the U.S. is thinking, and it would also be advantageous for us to know how Russia is thinking. And when you have a digital barricade up with news, media, social media posts, when you can't access podcasts, when when things are being flagged and taken down all over the place because Russia is keeping you know news away from their people, they want to spread Russian state propaganda to Russian citizens, and then you have platforms like YouTube flagging videos that are p- just possibly Russian propaganda or flagging podcasts that have been around for years that are not Russian propaganda, but they're taken down off Spotify with no explanation. That is a lose-lose situation for everyone. When you're in a conflict, especially like this, having no information, like how are we, how is that helping the situation if we don't know anything that is coming out of Russia. Give us everything, including the propaganda, and let people sort it out for themselves. There are very good journalists and very good, uh, you know, independent media sources that will be able to go through the shitstorm that is coming out of Russia and decipher what's real from what's the propaganda or do it on some sort of sliding spectrum because sometimes you get... 
uh, or a lot of times you get both propaganda and facts in the same article and they're mixed together. So it's hard to know what is what. Unfortunately, in Russia, we can't do shit about that right now. We can't force Russia to let independent media sources and, you know, give access to Facebook, Netflix. We, we don't have any control over that. But what we do have control over in the U.S. at least is we can allow an influx of information from Russia and stop just flagging anything and everything that could possibly be Russian propaganda. Like, who gives a shit? Like, if, if there's some stories that get through that aren't true, um, you know, things that things that make it into the public narrative that end up being false stories, that's going to happen. You can't prevent 100% from that. But when you block off two when you block off 100%, when you make a black hole of information, again, it's much more dangerous to not know what the other side is doing at all than to get facts and propaganda from the other side. And I wanted to say, you know, it, it's pretty stupid. The number one rule in conflict resolution is lead with understanding. This is something that I've seen hammered home in books like how to win friends and influence people i've seen this in in negotiating books like how to split the difference with chris foss this is just like conflict resolution 101 is when you want to resolve a conflict whether it's a lunch table fight or let alone an invasion a russian invasion you need to at minimum attempt to understand the other side you have to, how do you resolve a conflict with someone else or another entity when you have no idea about that entity, when you can't understand where that person is coming from? And part of deciphering where someone is coming from, like Putin, uh, like other world leaders, is looking at what's coming out of that country. And if you block that off completely, you have no fucking uh, chance. You have no shot in hell to be able to resolve that conflict. And the thing is, propaganda also tells you things too. If you have Russian propaganda or any propaganda where, where it's constantly, you, you pick up on certain patterns, you pick up on certain things, you know, this is a story that's been false from the beginning, or we keep seeing these types of stories that aren't true. This is being exaggerated. This isn't being exaggerated. You can even learn from the propaganda. So even if propaganda gets through, which it will, that is also helpful to us in the United States and other countries outside of Russia. Let the propaganda in because that all that is information. It's false information, but that information may lead to us picking up on patterns and learning the way that Russian leadership is thinking. You want to learn how the Russian cartel is thinking. And in order to do that, you have to be able to see what they're doing. You have to understand how the hell you, you can't do that. You, you can't begin to resolve this conflict without understanding the other side. And that's something that I've been guilty of uh, many times as I start the podcast timer <laughs> eight minutes in. Uh, but uh, we're rolling. So but that is that's something that I've struggled with in the past and I will continue to struggle with as long as I'm a human being is learning to understand perspectives that are outside my own. I had a roommate in college who is also my best friend. Shout out, John. And I came into college as a messy, sloppy piece of shit. I had horrible cleanup habits, like cleaning up the kitchen, bathroom, you know, shaving pubes, leaving them in the fuck it. Like, John would be like, how are you trailing pubes into the hallway? And I'm like, I don't know, dude. Figure it out. I'm shaving my pubes, you do you. You know, just fucking cleaning my balls in the sink. But I was very bad at being a cleanly person and respecting my roommate's space. I, I, I was thinking, you know, if this isn't a problem for me, then this isn't a problem. If, if this is, I'm, if I'm okay living in this filth, other people must be too. And it wasn't until I made that shift with, oh, I'm living with people now. I can't just 
throw clothes into my closet until it reaches the top and starts to press against the closet and deluges out. That's what I did with my dirty laundry. I literally just stuff it in my closet as a kid until I didn't have enough room. I can't do that in a space I'm sharing with other people because other people think differently than me. I needed to understand the way that my roommate operated and my roommates operated. And then from there, I gradually started shaving my pubes closer and closer to the toilet and the shower. It wasn't an immediate change, but it was a, a, a shift over time. And that's important to make the effort to understand another person, another human being. And we weren't enemies, you know? I mean, um, not at all. He's my best friend. And so even that for me was difficult at first to to share space with my best friend and understand the rules. So if you're if you're in a fucking invasion, if you're at war or about to be and you want to prevent it, you are absolutely fucked if you think you can prevent it without knowing how the other side is thinking. You have to know what they want. You have to know their desires. It doesn't mean it's okay. It doesn't mean, oh, because we're allowing these posts, we're checking that off and saying this this is okay. I I hate that. I hate people will DM me occasionally and say, oh, you have you had this person on your podcast. That means you agree with everything they've ever said and tweeted. And I'm like, no, I had them on the podcast because they're an interesting person, much more interesting than the people that comment on the podcast. For the most part, sometimes I get some some interesting ones. Um, and I wanted to speak with this person and talk about the ways that I disagree with them. And it doesn't mean that just because you allow something to be platformed that you are saying it's okay. I hate when people fucking say that because how are you supposed to have discussions? How are you supposed to have conversations? And it's the same thing. Like, If you're not allowing a platform for Russian information to come through to the rest of the world, if you're just like sanctioning the shit out of social media from Russia, uh, movies from Russia... Uh, podcast from uh, like any Facebook posts. I, I saw that the rush, the, the cat federation banned something with the breeding of Russian cats. Like what the fuck is that? Like <laughs> this, this war is going to end because some lady can't get her ninth cat that happens to be a Russian breed. Like it's all this, it's all this virtue signaling that doesn't make sense. And at the end of the day, it just leads to less and less understanding, more and more conflict, and both sides digging their heels into the ground more than just being like, okay, let's take a beat, you know, let's fucking, let's just see what happens if we open the channels a little bit. You can always close it, it's always there, but let's just open it up a little bit. And this Russia-US digital blackout will go the same way as cancel culture, mark my words. LaCroix sponsor me. That was a LaCroix set for you, those of you listening. The the Russia-US digital blackout, this digital barricade, will go the same way as cancel culture. And what I mean is this. Canceling your enemy doesn't make them go away. We, we've seen this. When, when someone tweets something, when someone comes on a podcast and sticks their foot in their mouth on, on uh, you know, Joe Rogan, whatever... And then people call for their cancellation. They get deplatformed off Twitter, Facebook. Like they did that with Alex Jones. And now he said he's making more money on his website because it pushed his audience underground. It didn't make his audience go away. It's not like if if uh, my favorite podcaster, my favorite media personality got canceled, it's not like I'm going to stop listening to them. I'm just going to have to go through a little bit more work to listen to them. And sure, you'll lose some people, but a lot of people, when someone gets canceled, it empowers the creator that got canceled, and it empowers the audience. It, do it doesn't cancel. Like, no one's getting canceled. It's just sending them in a place where they're harder to track, or it's sending them behind a paywall, or it's sending them to email. It's harder to keep tabs on them. And if you wanted to keep tabs on someone, if you wanted to know how someone is thinking to understand their side, you would never want to cancel them because then, you know, you don't have access to their information anymore. If someone, if someone was truly dangerous, 
which is a word that gets thrown around with with a lot of people uh, like Trump, like Alex Jones, Joe Rogan, whatever the list goes on on both sides. If you have someone that's truly dangerous, why in the hell would you want to cancel them? Wouldn't you want to see what they're posting? Wouldn't you want to see what they're thinking? Isn't that more dangerous? If you believe someone is a truly dangerous person, doesn't that make them more dangerous to send their audience and send them behind a paywall or uh, send them to email only, Telegram, whatever? Don't you want them posting on Facebook, Twitter? Because then you can actually see what they're doing. So it makes no sense. And the same thing, if, if we are quote unquote canceling Russia, Russia isn't going anywhere. We, we're just not going to know what they're doing now. Don't you want people posting what's going on in Russia, even if, again, a lot of it's fake, like we'll still get some real stuff and the propaganda might show some patterns. But when you cancel someone, you send them underground and you also give the person you're canceling the ability to say, hey, look, they're canceling me. They're the real enemy. Not me. I'm just making content. I'm just invading Ukraine. I'm, you know, I'm the innocent one here. That's what Putin said. He's like, I'm, you know, I'm trying to stop the, the Nazi genocide in Ukraine or whatever. That's what he's telling his own people. And sure, a lot of people know it's bullshit, but there are a lot of people in Russia that still believe that Ukraine is just like overrun with Nazis and that Putin is this hero coming in and stopping mass genocide. Like that is literally the narrative that's being spread. And if you if you quote unquote cancel Putin, you're just making it easier for him to spread his propaganda to his own people and empower his country. They're going to dig their heels in the ground even further rather than just let them fucking be on the platform let them post shit and now putin can go hey look you know us they they are the enemy they canceled me they they're the ones sanctioning me i'm just this guy i'm i'm just a guy that's what everyone wants to be even if you're even if you're not even if you're a girl you just want to be like hey, i'm just a guy you know like i just got i'm the one getting attacked i'm i'm just a guy on a podcast i'm not i'm a fucking idiot now, by, can by sanctioning um, Putin, by canceling essentially, you know, anything posted about, you know, Russia, Russian media coming out of Russia, you are letting Putin just be like, oh, dude, dude he's just, <laughs> I'm, you're giving him that outlet. I'm, dude, I'm just a guy. I'm just, I'm fucking doing my own thing and fucking US and the whole world came along and sanctioned me. I'm just doing my shit, you know, no surprise. And so you give you give him that outlet and you give other people that outlet and Putin is someone who's actually dangerous. So you want to know as much as you can about him. So, um, the, the, the U S Russia digital barricade. I also have a soft spot in my heart for this because as an independent creator, I know that this will also be a huge blow to independent creators in the U.S. and in Russia. Because it, it, it's getting rid of a lot of independent news outlets in Russia. So there, there are a lot of people that are getting their videos demonetized on YouTube. There are a lot of platforms that are just fucking gone, like Facebook and Twitter. There are. I was reading about independent journalists that are left in Russia that are posting on YouTube. It's demonetized now. YouTube might go away, but they're in a lot of danger and they're still posting and, and doing their job and reporting what's going on. Someone can show up at their house and fucking murk them anytime, but there are brave people that are th th like actually brave. Um, not just saying brave, but pe people independent creators independent journalists in russia that are actually trying to spread good information are, are at very high risk and a lot of them are leaving and then creators that are outside of russia but posting things that are russia related are getting flagged and having their podcast taken down maybe this gets taken down i don't fucking know this this is probably gonna get some sort of flag on youtube because i've said russia eight thousand times already and it's going to harm independent creators. It's going to make it easier for corporate media to hang on a little bit longer as they slowly approach death. 
And it also gives big tech a shield to hide behind. This is something else I was thinking about, that now that we have all these sanctions against Russian media and that we're flagging things that are possibly Russian propaganda, Russia related, this gives big tech an outlet to hide behind because now they can take a podcast down and just say, oh, like we're not taking them down. We're taking them down because they are spreading Russian propaganda. Like if, if they do that with someone like Joe Rogan, I don't know, John Stewart, what, like whatever. If, if, if big tech doesn't like you, now they can use the excuse and hide behind it as a shield, use the Russian propaganda excuse and say, we're trying to rid our platform of disinformation about Russia. You violated that rule. You're fucking gone now. And they don't actually have to address you as a creator. They have another excuse to hide behind and give you the boot. They can say, oh, we're, we're protecting the public's best interest by ridding Russian propaganda off of Spotify or Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Hey guys, this is a quick reminder to check out Auxoro Premium, the best deal in premium podcasting. On Auxoro Premium, you gain access to bonus episodes, the unlicensed therapy series, the ability to submit topic suggestions for the podcast, exclusive Ask Me Anything episodes, and the entire premium catalog for only five bucks per month. Go to auxoro.supercast.com, that's A-U-X-O-R-O.supercast.com to join the premium gang today.